Take a seat. Now, this study was initiated with uh, Strategy Com in September 2008, uh, at a time when you know there was very strong employment growth. Um, I think you will know that in the previous four years, nearly 600,000 jobs were created. Then, for the first five, for the first nine months of 2008, 200,000 jobs were still being created. First nine months, yeah, and. Uh, at that, around the time, there were various surveys to show that uh, the manpower challenge was a top concern for SMEs after competition. And one of the key challenges they reported was <coughs> in attracting and retaining talent. Okay, so I'm trying to uh, cast your mind back to September 08 when the study was first initiated. <coughs> However, in the last quarter of 2008, as you know, the economy turned downward sharply. Yeah. GDP declined by 4.2% and job growth slowed down to 21,300 yeah, compared to 55,000 in the third quarter and 62,000 in the fourth quarter. The job growth slowed down, the economy did. Not only that, the retrenchment rose, as you know, in the fourth quarter of last year, 7,005 compared to 6,040 for the entire nine months mm -hmm. of 2008. Yeah. And of course, the economy is not projected to uh, contract by 2 to 5 percent uh, by MDI, right? Employment growth also expected to moderate. So you may ask yourself in the <coughs> relevance of a survey you know, to help SMEs to brand themselves as employers. Yeah? Now, an ongoing SNAP survey shows that of uh, about 200 companies, uh, as at 20th March, about 56% expect to freeze headcount. Another 7% will reduce uh, headcount. 56% expected to freeze headcount. 7% will reduce headcount. Yeah. Um, where is the retrenchment number in this? 56 plus 7. Retrenchment is within the 7%. 7. Okay, so 56 expect to freeze. 7% will reduce headcount mainly to natural attrition, uh, you know, non renewal of contracts and retrenchment. However, 37% are still hiring in the first quarter of 2009. And of the hiring companies, 60% 60 were employees with less than 200 employees, the target of the study. In fact, you know, in, in media reports, some of you have carried, you will, uh, for example, the Manpower Inc. survey that was released. Uh, on the 10th of March, they say that of 236 <coughs> companies across seven industry sectors, only 7% were expected to increase headcount for the second quarter, compared to 8% in the first quarter. So, you know, generally surveys show that the, the percentage of companies uh, in any sample that were recruiting uh, is declining quarter to quarter, and generally there's a decline. Yeah. But even though it is declined, there's a small number, small percentage which are still recruiting. Okay, and our survey shows that 60% of those recruiting would be considered SMEs. Okay, of course the numbers they recruit may be small because we didn't look at the numbers that they were recruiting. But the fact is that they were still recruiting. Yeah. Well, this is very important because SMEs contribute 47% of our GDP. They employ 60% of our workforce. So I think uh, the, the issue of uh, SME employment is an important pillar uh, you know, for our economy. So that's the backdrop. Okay? In other words, uh, when we first initiated the study, it was on the back of very strong employment growth. SMEs were saying manpower challenge is an important issue. We have problems recruiting and retaining people. And on the basis of that, we launched the study. So it started. Uh, in September, I think it was concluded around December, January period. Yeah. So the findings of this survey, I believe, provide some insights into how SMEs can brand themselves as employers, even in a downturn. And they should they can make use of the time to build and strengthen their HR capabilities, especially in recruitment and retention of staff. Because there are other components of HR capabilities. Yeah? But they can make use of this time to build and strengthen HR capability in those two areas. 
SMEs, which usually have limited resources, can focus on the four areas, or on the several areas which the study uh, now highlights. Okay, and this is where I think Strategy Com will make a presentation to identify some of these common areas uh, that affect staff retention, uh, attraction and retention among SMEs. Okay, so at this point, I'll ask uh, Wilson uh, to present the findings of this uh, study. Okay. As rightfully uh, said by John Kier, um finding the right fit in organization uh, in good and bad times seemed to be always a difficulty for companies. And this study uh, that applies contextually to SMEs uh, uh, is completed now. And, and if you may, I just go up front and, and present the the study findings. This is a study in branding of SMEs as employers. Uh, yeah. I want to take this opportunity to also thank uh, John Kiet and, and his team, SNAF, for being a part of this study. They were an integral uh, organization to the formation of how this study was being structured. The presentation this afternoon will consist of five parts. The competitive environment, I'll give you a bit of a background as to why this study was formulated in the first place. The aims, the objectives, uh, how we approach the study, some broad definitions. Then we get into the analysis of the data that we found and the findings. And what does the findings mean to employers, SME employers particularly? So let's start. Um, the three salient uh, driving forces of this study were the, fact that, were the fact that SMEs often face difficulties attracting retaining. That's one. Generally, there is also a, a broad understanding that talents, uh, and there are many definitions of talents, so let's not get into the technical definitions of talents. I will define it contextually for the study, but talents generally tend to prefer to work for larger organizations than smaller ones. And of course, SMEs in Singapore therefore face a, a high labor cost and availability of quali qualified workforce. Yeah. The study purpose was for a, uh, was for a number of uh, uh, objectives. First, the idea was to help SMEs in Singapore build a stronger employer brand. That was the first purpose of the study. The second purpose of the study was in the context of employer branding, what are some of the key attributes that contribute to building a strong employer brand? Yeah. So the first part is, yes, we want to help you. Second part is, what are the attributes that will help you? And of course, to, the, the best way of doing this is to reach out to talents by seeking their understanding and perception of what are the attributes that are important for them when they job seek and when they are in an organization, job stay. So, attraction and, and retention. Okay. The study purpose is broadly uh, a contribution to the SME community. We hope to help SMEs identify some of the key, employ key critical employer brand attributes that will, of course, help them attract and, and retain talent. Now, let me share with you now how we went about doing this research study. The framework is actually quite simple. We started out by looking at existing literature and published work both in the academic field as well as the applied business field. Uh, what are the latest literature and the, the conversations that are existing, the latest literature as to what employer branding is? We then extracted key attributes from this secondary literature. And that was the first part of this entire phase. We then worked with SNEF and we surveyed 33 employers. These are uh, companies and we asked them what are some of the key attributes and in, uh, some of the things, the factors that are important in building a strong employer brand. With the findings that we gathered from the employers, we then evaluated and compared and contrasted it to the secondary research findings of the literature that we found. And we extracted 
common and salient key attributes. So that was how we established the attributes. In reality, with 33 employers, secondary research on literature, we extracted variables as well. Take a seat.